Hi, it's Melissa from Special Ed Law Mom. I wanted to come on today. I did a video earlier this morning about transitioning out of pediatric care into adult care with your medical. And I wanted to come on and do a brief video about transitioning from high school. Now, if you watch my channel, you may have seen I have a four part series about our battles with transition with our school system um, and my daughter. But this is about once you've either graduated from high school or you leave a post high program, it can sometimes feel like you're falling off a cliff. And so I wanted to talk to you about some things that I have found helpful. I am not an expert in this area. I am currently living this, um, but I wanted to talk to you about some things that are possibly helpful that could help you. So like I said, it can feel like you're falling off a cliff. Um, your your child, and it feels that way for your child. Um, if you remember transitioning from high school to adulthood, there's a lot of questions about what am I going to do? Where am I going to live? What job am I going to have? Am I going to go to college? And for these kids, they're not always ready to go on a regular track to have a job or go to college. And so they sometimes don't know what life is going to throw at them. So with our oldest, she had the college track and she's done that and she's still in college. Um, has obtained her bachelor's and is working on her master's and she's also been able to work at a job. She started at an internship at a bank and that has turned into employment for her. But with our youngest, it's been different and she has not um, been ready or had a desire to go to college. There's been some nervousness about that and we have some things that we need to work through. And we were not able to be in a post high program. My four part series tells all about that. Um, and so we actually had to create a post high program for her the best that we could with the limited resources that are out there. So the first thing I would say is it's so important to have a plan. You need to have a plan for these kids because if you don't have one, they don't know what's coming. And if that plan can include some sort of a regular schedule that gives them some predictability, then it can help a lot. As I mentioned, as a, a neurotypical person, when you're transitioning from adult or from um, being a child to an adult, there's lots of questions about where your life is going and what you're doing. Um, but for these guys, if you don't have a plan and you don't have um, a schedule for them, then there can be a lot of anxiety and depression that comes about, and that's typical, and we don't want that for them. So I would say have a plan. I would say start early with your plan, researching what options are out there for you, um, there are centers, I've been told, across the United States that are called independent living centers, and my experience with those has been that they teach classes. Um, they bring in the post-high kids sometimes. They also bring in kids just from the community and adults as well, and they offer different classes. Sometimes they're elective type classes. Sometimes they're independent or life skills classes. They have outings in the community and things like that. And my experience has been that those are free. Um, they are a charity. I do know that they can charge for summer camps, um, but the cost on that is minimal compared to what you get. Um, in our situation, that has been a great resource. There are also, um, because autism and because post high has um, struggles in many places, not just limited to where we live, um, there are medical clinics that will sometimes offer life skills, and we happen to have one here through our university that has a life skills clinic run by occupational therapists, and they help not only young kids, but they also help kids that are leaving high school, teenagers, and even into adulthood. And they work with them one-to-one, -one, um, weekly sessions. Now, in our situation, there's quite a long wait list, but they work with them one-to-one. -one, and they basically set up kind of like an IEP that talks about the different things that they need. And then they work on those. So we have worked on hygiene. We have worked on cooking, budgeting, math, money, um, planning, uh, routines, trying to organize things, all sorts of things. Um, so that is a great resource. It also is helpful to find hobbies that the kids might enjoy. Um, a lot of times they like video games and they like being on the computer, but 
if you can try to find things that could potentially lead to employment, that can be really helpful. Um, so one thing, our daughter has done a class, an online class once a week for an area that she really enjoys. And I don't know if that will turn into a career or a side gig or what, but it's been really enjoyable for her and something that she looks forward to. We've also tried to get her into photography because she has a lot of art talent and, and whatnot. Um, and so we're, we're just trying to explore different things. We also have done tutoring. She has tutoring sessions twice a week. Um, and we're helping her with some academics with that. So there has been some effort that has been put in. We've had to coordinate things. We've had to find these resources. Some of them have cost money. Some of them have been free or very low cost. Um, but we've been able to set up a schedule for her where nearly every day there is something. Um, it also has given us time to work on some medical issues that we may not have had time for when she was in school. So she has a weekly therapy appointment. Um, for several months, we were doing physical therapy two times a week, um, just different things that we weren't necessarily able to do or that may have had to be fit in after school or in the summer, and we were able to take care of those. So it's really important to try to set up, sorry about my phone, it's really important to try to set up a schedule and have a visual schedule for them where they can see what's going to happen. Um, so they know on Monday I do this, on Tuesday I do that, on Wednesday I do this. Um, the next thing I wanted to say, and I have the um, opportunity that I am creating a life skills curriculum, um, which it'll be life skills for all. And um, I'm creating that. And in the process of creating that, I've, I've been going through a lot of curriculum and I created a binder um, for my daughter that has lots of different topics, including budget, savings, hygiene, buying, telephone etiquette, uh, text and email etiquette, um, loans and credit, contracts and commitments, tipping, purchasing at the store, all sorts of topics um, with worksheets and activities for her to do. And while I have not been perfect at implementing these, she actually asked me this week if we could work on them. Um, and I have one for my other daughter as well, because just because you go to college doesn't mean you know how to do these things, trust me. Um, and they don't teach them in school. So um, if you're interested in that life skills program, we will be launching that this fall. You can leave your information below. My email is down below if you'd like to be on a mailing list for that. Um, but I have the opportunity to, to do that because I'm creating um, so that's something that I can work on with her. I've also had her helping me with bills. Um, we started where she opens the bills. We look at the bills. She compares the bills with the check register. Um, I've been working on banking with her where I show her how we use the bank, how we do things online. Um, we we go through the grocery ads together. We try to meal plan together. Um, I wish I could say I'd been better at cooking with her. Cooking is actually something I enjoy myself, and, and so I've been a little bit selfish about that, but there are great resources out there for cooking, including America's Test Kitchen Cooking School. It's a great book. I hope to have a lesson plan um, for that available someday, um, but go through cookbooks, let them pick recipes that maybe they want to try and work those into your meal plan. Basically, keep them busy. Um, because otherwise they're going to get depressed. They're going to get bored. And in our case, our daughter doesn't drive and she's fearful of public transportation, which we need to work on. And so if I don't have something for her, there's not a whole lot going on, which again, escalates that anxiety or depression. So back to my original point, plan, plan, plan. And we had to, we had a plan in the fall. We had to reevaluate it in January and we're getting ready to reevaluate it for this coming fall because things have changed. She's out, you know, she's done the independent living post high classes. Um, we don't really need to repeat those, um, you know, all of those types of things. So finally, if you can get them into a job, um, and we've been able to do that uh, last summer and this summer, it really can boost their self-esteem. 
And I don't believe that uh, disabled kids should be limited to scrubbing tables and floors and toilets. I think that there are a lot of things out there that they can do that you can help them with starting at home and then that they can do. And um, so if you can help them feel productive, that can go a long way. So again, plan, have a schedule, have options for them, try to explore their interests, and maybe you won't feel as much of falling off that cliff as you would in the beginning. I'm not saying it's perfect. I think you refine it as you go. I'm not an expert in any way, but I just wanted to share um, what we have found has been helpful. I'm sure there is more we could do, but um, when they leave those services, whether it's graduation or post high, if they don't follow a traditional path, you have to help create that path for them. So I hope this is helpful, helpful for you. If this video has provided any value to you, I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe. Please leave me a, a comment down below if there's anything else that you'd like me to talk about. Um, if you want to be on the mailing list for Life Skills for All, I'm happy to put you on that. And until next time, I hope you make it a great day. Thanks. Bye.